Okay, good morning and hello. Today our topic is female physiology before pregnancy and female hormones. It is basically from the chapter 82 of the chitin. So, first of all, we will start by studying the general aspects of the ovary. As you can see, uh, principal organs are ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus and vagina. This is the ovary, then comes the fallopian tubes and this is the uterus and this is the vagina and there is a small part between them called known as the cervix so functions of ovaries uh, it is uh, oogenesis basically the generation of ova and secretion of ovarian hormones uh, there are different hormones secreted by the ovaries we will discuss them later and uh, there's a, a monthly female sexual cycle uh, the, during reproductive life uh, when there's uh, the puberty started and uh, there is the rhythmical changes in the female hormone secretion and there are also changes in the ovary and sexual organs which are known as the female sexual cycle and that cycle is about 28 days um, it can uh, average between 20 to 25 days and then it is known as the variable stage and uh, abnormal cycle length uh, this is the abnormal cycle length and it is associated with decreased female fertility okay so we will move on it has three cycles uh, there are three changes being occurred uh, first of all there is a hormonal cycle um, uh, there is a change, is a change in concentration of FSH, LH, estrogen and progesterone and then there is the ovarian cycle uh, in, in this cycle there is mature graphian follicle or the ovum the ova the egg as you can pronounce it uh, as you like and then there's the ovulation the release of the ovum from the corpus luteum and uh, sorry then there's the formation of the corpus luteum when the uh, it is released from it uh, and, uh, and, and then there's the degeneration uh, if no fertilization occurs and then there's the endometrial changing in the walls of the uterus and uh, they become spongy before and the uh, fertilization they will get ready in advance uh, there are two significant results of the sexual cycle a uh, single ovum is released each month basically there are four formed and three are re uh, degenerated and one survives it and uh, the endometrium is prepared in advance for implantation and then there's a hormonal system uh, there are three hierarchies of hormones first of all there's the hypothalamus uh, which is uh, releasing uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone and then uh, it uh, stimulates the anterior pituitary gland which releases the fsh and lh and then the ovaries they release estrogen and progesterone this is the whole hierarchies controlling the hormonal system and all are secreted at different rates uh, during different parts of the female monthly cycle so uh, the fsh and lh and their effect on the ovaries um, it depends uh, the changes depend on fsh and lh which are which is secreted from the anterior pituitary gland and during childhood uh, fsh and lh secretion is absent and uh, they remain inactive and and uh, at the age of puberty, 9 to 12 years, uh, basically it is 12 to 15, uh, 16 years, uh, the pituitary gland, FSH and LH receptors, they release FSH and LH and receptors on the ovarian target cells and uh, they uh, detect them and then the onset of normal monthly cycles between the age of 11 to 15 years, it can also be 12 to 16 years and um, it is quite variable and the uh, menstruation si menstrual cycle starts and it is called menarche and there's FSH and LH are protein hormones they are basically peptides and uh, act by the cyclic AMP activation and then the phosphorylation of protein occurs ovarian cycle 
From the time of birth, there are many primordial follicles under the ovarian capsule. There are many, and each contains an immature ovum. Finally, four are remain, and then the only one is selected to be the final, which is gonna get fertilized. And uh, there are rhythmical changes dependent on FSH and LH, uh, which occurs in the female during the sexual cycle of 28 day duration, and. Uh, uh, as you can see here, this is the primordial follicles. As you can see, four of them, and then one is selected, and it has uh, some layers uh, in it. Uh, it is surrounded by granulosa cells, and then th there's the zona pellucida surrounding the oocyte, and there also are the theca cells, which are uh, most external, and then there is an antrum growing. Uh, inside the secondary follicle which is full of estrogen and then there is this graphene follicle which is the fully mature follicle and as you can see there is a big antrum uh, between it and there are uh, there is uh, the oocyte present in the middle and uh, there uh, is uh, the uh, the granulosa cells are radiating outwards therefore it is called corona radiata and uh, as you know like there's a cumulus of this this and uh, then uh, it it uh, is formed uh, the ovum is released and the corpus luteum is formed and here you can see there's a generating corpus luteum and then when it is very small in the end it is called corpus albicans as you can see it it is uh, radiating uh, the granulosa cells are radiating it is called corona radiata and then there's the ovarian cycle it has three phases follicular ovulation and luteal in this phase follic follicles are formed and in this phase the womb is released okay so we will study the follicle phase first uh, its duration is from day 5 and uh, ovulation to day 14th and under the influence of FSH follicle stimulating hormones granulosa cells are formed and uh, LH also affects theca cells and 10 to 15 primordial follicles start maturing and then there are four remaining and then there's only one remaining and which is called the graphene follicle and other goes and undergo atresia uh, this is the same thing i have explained before but with a different picture as you can see i'm not going to explain it here and then there is the ovulation. Uh, it is the rupture of the graphene follicles, release of the secondary oocyte from the ovary and into the abdominal cavity. Via abdominal cavity, and, and then the fimbria catches the ovum, and then and it is uh, present in the fallopian tubes. It is released into the abdominal cavity and uh, it uh, it involves LH surge, neutralizing hormone surge and increased pro progesterone secretion from the granulosa and theca cells so here is the ovarian cycle as you can see uh, there is a primordial follicle then it grows into the graphene follicle then the ovulation occurs and uh, the ovum is released and then there is the corpus luteum and then there is the corpus albicans as you can see um, uh, the temperature is less and uh, when there is the ovulation is being occurred it increases and then goes high and uh, the hormones they are normal uh, when the follicles are growing and uh, as you can see there is a surge of luteinizing hormone when there is the ovulation being occurred and uh, due to this uh, this surge the ovulation occurs if LH is uh, there is a lack of uh, LH then the, the ovulation will not occur quite good and uh, as you can see a follicle stimulation uh, stimulating hormone uh, also is uh, getting a surge and the ovarian hormones uh, there is an increase in estradiol when there is uh, ovulation being occurred and uh, after ovulation there is an increase in progesterone for uh, doing its functions uh, uh, luteal phase and it is constant it is uh, composed of 14 days 
in its events uh, corpus hemorrhagicum and then the corpus luteum is formed and then the corpus albicans if it the pregnancy does not occur corpus luteum generates four days before the next menses uh, which is the 24 days of the cycle and it is replaced by scar tissues called the corpus albicans which is a very small uh, thing and the corpus luteum of pregnancy measures force of estrogen and progesterone till third month of the pregnancy where placenta takes over then there is the um, ovarian cycle as i have explained before so estrogen inhibin and progesterone which are produced by the corpus luteum has a negative feedback effect on the secretion of LH basically when there is more estrogen and progesterone there will be less uh, FSH and LH and when there is um, uh, menopause occurs there is less estrogen um, and then there are the more FSH and LH and low levels of FSH and LH uh, corpus luteum degenerates completely and uh, which is by the 26th day of the cycle estrogen progesterone and inhibin uh, they if their secretion decreases and uh, there is a removal of uh, inhibition on the secretion of fsh and lh and there's increased secretion of fsh and lh and the new cycle starts basically occurs in the menopause stage and there is this is the monthly uh, reproductive cycle there is, uh, is the gonadotrop gonadotropic hormones uh, uh, which are fsh and lh and they are uh, noticing a great surge when there is ovulation phase especially the lh hormone and when there is uh, enough lh the ovulation will occur if uh, there is not enough lh present then the ovulation will not occur as you can see estrogen is also getting a surge when there is a the ovulation being occurred and in the before ovulation progesterone is very very less and after the ovulation it it suddenly sees a spike okay and in the cycle there's menses then there's a proliferative phase and then more arteries are being developed and then in the secretory phase it is it becomes sponge like and then they it is the and then again the menses occurs when there is no fertilization and when the ovulation is being occurred the temperature of the body increases for the ovulation to occur properly and uh, there, then there is the feedback regulation of the hypothalamic and pituitary ovarian axis in the female and as you can see uh, the anterior pituitary uh, sorry we will start from the brain um, in the hypothalamus uh, it releases the gonadotropic releasing hormone and then they act on the anterior pituitary gland which release the LH and FSH uh, LH and FSH are uh, acting on the uh, theca cells and uh, granulosa cells okay and the theca cells release androgens and progesterins and the granula and granulosa cells release the estrogens and also some progesterins if LH acts on the granulosa cells as well and usually FSH acts and it leaves only uh, estrogens and then they act on the target tissue uh, when there is inner production of the estrogen they they inhibit they inhibit the hypothalamus to increase to uh, secrete LH and FSH eventually as you can see it here so monthly endometrial cycle uh, cyclic events uh, take place in a rhythmic manner uh, to the 28 day cycle and it starts at the age of 12 to 15 years it is called menarche and sees that of 45 to 50 years which is the menopause so uh, the phases are in the first day bleeding is day one of the menstrual cycle uh, day one to five there's a constant bleeding and then there's the proliferative phase in which the uh, epithelial lining starts uh, regenerating it is uh, it occurs uh, from six to 14 days and then there's the ovulation the release of the ovum and then there's a secretory phase in which the the epithelium becomes sponge like 
As you can see here, there is, this is the menstruative phase and the bleeding occurs, it shuts off, only the basal layer remains and then there is a proliferative phase and more blood vessels and then there is a secretory phase, there are more blood vessels and veins and then uh, if fertilization doesn't occur, there is menstruation occurs and as you can see, uh, there is an, a surge of LH, uh, sorry, estrogen when there is ovulation being occurred, which is from the 14th day, for, which is on the 14th day. And then there is a proliferative estrogen phase uh, from day 6 to, 6 to 14. Changes are stimulated by estrogen levels and endometrium rebuilds itself. And the, the rising levels of estrogen cause endometrium to make a new layer. And estrogen is basically the healing cause for the endometrium. And the layer becomes thick and well supplied with blood. Uh, cervical mucus is normally thick and sticky. And uh, estrogen uh, makes the cervical mucus thin so the sperm can be let through and the thickness of the endometrium is 3 to 4 mm at the end of the proliferative phase before the ovulation. ovulation occurs at the end of the proliferative stage usually around day 14 and uh, follows a sudden release surge of LH. As you can see here uh, there is a surge of LH between the follicular and luteal phase. I have explained this to you before. Uh, I have explained all this cycle before. Then there's the secretory phase and uh, it is from the 15 to 28. There's the implantation of the embryo, increased progesterone, swelling and secretory development. There's a blood supply, increases in thicker cervical mucus for the thickening of the endometrial stroma and it results in the secretory endometrium containing stored nutrients. Uh, then there is the menstruation when ovum is not fertilized in, in relation of the corpus luteum, decreased progesterone and then there is the menstruation and uh, there is a necrosis and slug, uh, slug, slugging and desquamated tissue and blood is expelled and this process continues for 24 to 36 hours, basically 2 days within 48 hours when 3 days are completed there is a reduction of estrogen and progesterone and super Official layer is completely decimated, only the basal layer remains. So, uh, endometrium and blood in the endometrial cavity init initiates the contraction of the uterus, and then the expulsion occurs, menstruation from the three to seven days. And then there is a fibrinolysin, in which co occurs, uh, causes the lysis of blood clots, and then there is a leukocytes present in the mes uh, menstrual blood to prevent infection at the end thank you very much for listening goodbye